Hello, welcome to video 24, where we look at the national minimum wage. All we're going to do in this video is define the minimum wage and look at the arguments for it and against it. And we'll look at one diagram which shows that maybe unemployment gets created when a minimum wage is set. So, let's get on with it. The national minimum wage, or NMW, it's defined as the lowest wage rate at which a worker can be legally employed. Workers cannot be employed at below this wage rate. Okay, so the, the minimum wage at which workers can be employed. Although it might be a certain group of workers, it, in some countries it's workers over 21. And there might be a, another minimum wage for workers between 18 and 21. And indeed, workers between 16 and 18. So, for the workers, as they are defined by age, it is the minimum wage at which they can be employed. Firms are not allowed to employ them at lower wage rates. Okay, let's look at arguments for a national minimum wage. Firstly, the argument that it prevents the exploitation of low or no skilled workers. Workers with low or no skills are the most vulnerable workers in society and there is a danger that they will be exploited with un unacceptably low pay. So the government sets a minimum wage to prevent the exploitation of such workers. And that's the main argument for a national minimum wage. And it ensures a fair wage and reduces wage inequality, because by bumping up the wage rate of the, the lowest paid, this, this uh, closes the gap between the low paid and the high paid, and it reduces income inequality. When the minimum wage was introduced in, to the UK in the late 1990s, those people who were affected by the minimum wage, who were currently being paid below that minimum wage and had their wage raised, had an average wage rise of 9%. So it did make a difference, and it made a difference to 2 million people, something about 6% of the workforce of the UK. So it had a significant effect, and of course every time the minimum wage is changed, usually raised, this, this again has an effect and closes the, the, the income inequality. And that's an argument for having a minimum wage. Thirdly, it encourages training as firms train their low-skilled workers to get more from them now that they cost more. If firms are going to have to pay some employees more, they want to get more out of them. And that might be the motivation that a firm needs to train these low-skilled workers uh, to have more skills so that they can give back more, we call it marginal revenue product, uh, for, for the firm. In other words, if I'm going to pay you more, I want more work out of you, so let me train you more. And in this way, the, 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 the level, the quality of workers in, in, in the labour market rises because firms have a motivation to train their low-skilled workers. Fourthly, it raises the level of spending in the economy, especially as the low-paid have average propensity to consume of one. Now, you may not have studied average propensity to consume yet, but I think it's, it's, it's easy to see that the, the people on a low pay end up spending all their money, and people on very high pay might have the luxury of saving. Well, if you raise the pay slightly of the low paid, then they are going to spend their extra pay. Their average propensity to consume, which is the ratio between consumption and income, is usually one, meaning they spend all their money. And if you raise their pay, if they continue to spend all their money, then the economy will benefit because there'll be more spending in the economy. And if there is more spending in the economy, then they're going to be need, we're going to need to produce more goods and services in the economy. So that actually can actually create jobs. That's the argument. More job creation because more spending is happening in the economy. More spending is happening because people's pay has risen and they have more money, more disposable income to spend. So they are the arguments uh, for a minimum wage. Now let's look at the arguments against a minimum wage. Firstly, that it creates unemployment, the key argument against a minimum wage. And I'm going to take a bit of time out here to, to look at this argument, that it creates unemployment. Um, if you could see here, we have a labour market and the equilibrium wage, WE, is where the demand for labour meets the supply of labour and that would be the quantity of workers employed. But if the minimum wage is set above the equilibrium wage, then we create a disequilibrium because at this minimum wage there is less quantity demanded than quantity supplied. Only Q1 is demanded, we know that from this point on the demand curve, and yet at this minimum wage many more people wish to supply themselves for work, Q2. 
So we have excess supply of workers at the distance Q1, Q2. So this distance represents people who wish to work at the minimum wage but can't find work because there isn't demand for them. Consequently, that excess supply is unemployment. So it seems to suggest that if the equilibrium wage is not reached, but a minimum wage is imposed above the equilibrium, it creates excess supply or unemployment in society. And you know what? Even if this didn't exist, even if initially the demand curve, imagine that initially the demand curve had been here, um, and, and the minimum wage was in fact the equilibrium wage. Well, all it would take is a fall in the demand for labor from D1 to D2, if this was D2, and that would, whereas normally a new equilibrium would be reached, now a new equilibrium cannot be reached because the wage cannot fall and it would create this unemployment. This unemployment is not an area, it's a distance. The distance between Q1 and Q2. That would be the unemployment. And the only way that unemployment would be resolved, if the minimum wage remained there, is for once the demand had fallen, for it to go back and, and be restored at that level. So maybe it creates unemployment. If not immediately, and it can create unemployment when the demand curve falls because of a recession and the minimum wage is left stranded above the equilibrium. It's a serious argument, but it creates unemployment. Okay, um, so going back to these arguments against national minimum wage, we looked at this. A second argument is that it reduces the competitiveness of exports and increases import competitiveness. So it can worsen the trade position. It can cause unemployment again because maybe exports, are, now that workers cost more, maybe exports are no longer competitive in a global market against foreign goods, which of course may, may be being made by workers on much lower wage rates. So although it might be protecting workers, it actually might cost workers their jobs because the industry they work in is no longer competitive. Thirdly, perhaps it pushes up all labour costs as wage differentials are maintained. Workers are very sensitive about their position in the hierarchy of a business. And their position is reflected, not just by their position in an organisational chart, but also the wage that they receive relative to those above and below them. If workers on wages just above the national minimum wage feel threatened as they see workers below them getting a significant pay rise, they might successfully lobby their employer for a pay rise themselves to maintain the differential. And perhaps everybody shuffles up in, uh, in, in, in their wage rate to maintain equal differentials. If that happens, of course, the labor costs of the firm are going to go up uh, a lot, not just to those, those people at the bottom end. So that's a danger. It might really increase labor costs. Fourthly, it could increase inequalities as unemployed are left further behind. If you look at income inequalities and split up income groups into 10 different groups, 10 decile groups, from the highest income, the second highest 10%, the third highest, all the way down to the lowest 10%, that lowest 10% are not low paid workers, they are unemployed people and people on pensions. So the, who does the national minimum wage actually help? It does not help the very lowest income people, it helps people slightly above that group and the very lowest income people, the unemployed and people on nothing but a basic state pension, get further left behind if low paid workers get a pay rise because of the minimum wage. So in fact, you could argue it, it increases inequality. Fifth, it fails on a region by region view. In some regions, it might create unemployment. In other regions, it is meaningless. It cannot be a national minimum wage. What do I mean by this? Well, in in some areas, in some regions, the average wage might be um, so low, if I go back to this diagram, so low that the minimum wage, the national minimum wage that's imposed in that region and in all regions, is above the equilibrium and it creates unemployment, as we looked at before. In other regions, maybe that the average wage is much higher and the minimum wage does nothing. Because if the minimum wage is below equilibrium, it has no effect. Just to, be, uh, just to give an example, if, if I crudely divide uh, the UK into north and south, and I don't like doing this, but then perhaps this could be the situation if, if wages are lower in the north, 
it could be that the average wage is lower and the minimum wage is above that and it creates unemployment, but in the South, maybe the average wage is here and the minimum wage has no effect because it's below the equilibrium. So maybe you cannot apply a national minimum wage given that there are regional labour markets. Well, why not have a regional minimum wage then and look for the right minimum wage in every region? The problem with that is it reinforces the divide between regions. And anyway, what happens where, you, where one region meets the next? Does one side of the road have one minimum wage and the other side of the road have another minimum wage? It's a ridiculous situation. So perhaps a strong argument against the minimum wage is the fact that it's wrong to view labour markets as national anyway. They must be regional. And then within regions there are areas which are different to other areas. So ultimately it's very difficult to pin down a national minimum wage uh, as to being competent to, to have an effect in every region and every sub-region, sub uh, every labour market in every region and every labour market in every sub-region. It doesn't really apply. So very difficult to come up with a number, a minimum wage that is applicable and effective across a whole nation. So there are some of the arguments for and against uh, the minimum wage. And of course, maybe the most basic argument against a minimum wage is simply that it interferes with market mechanism. And, uh, but then maybe it's, it's needed. Otherwise, there would be exploitation. Anyway, the debate goes on. And you can have your own opinion, but you must see both sides of the argument. Okay, thanks very much. Bye-bye.